The sky was cloudy and gray as the black Cadillac hearse transported Mr. Jimmy's body to the burial site on Dallas Avenue. Even with only one family car following directly behind it, the car carrying Jimmy's younger sister and his son, Jimmy Jr., it was clear Mr. Jimmy was loved. It seemed like the entire East End showed up to attend his funeral at the Baptist church he attended on Frankstown Avenue. Most people had to stand in the back of the church or wait outside, but no one complained one bit. They wanted to be able to say they paid their respects to Jimmy Engram, the best friend of Elijah Smoke Lewis. When the service ended, everyone headed to their cars to follow the procession, clogging up both Frankstown and Dallas Avenues with the help of a police escort. If no one knew any better, they'd think this was the funeral of some dignitary, and maybe he was. To Pops, his friend was important enough for him to expose himself to whatever heat might come from being outside in the open at a funeral in broad daylight. Pops' mood was one I hadn't seen in a long time. Matter of fact, the last time he was like this, my mom had disappeared, and though I was too young to have witnessed all that happened following the revelation, I heard the stories of how Pops was busting down doors and killing anyone whispering disrespectful shit about where my mom had went to. There were rumors that she had skipped town with some nigga because she was tired of Pop sleeping around with the hoes. But he had trouble believing that because she knew who he was when they got together. Matter of fact, she was his other woman when he was with Zora. Well, her and others. And how could she get upset with him sticking to his ways, he told me later. It was never easy hearing how Pops did my mom, to be honest. But his reasoning was spot on and something I could relate to now. I was always up front with the women I dealt with, letting them know immediately there will be others, they will not be the only one, and that I was too busy to give them much of what they didn't realize they wanted. I can handle it. I'm not looking for anything serious, is what would come out of their mouths. I would just smile and shake my head. They had no idea. Or maybe they did. Either way, it never stayed the way they thought it would. At some point, they went from being cool with hearing from me sporadically and seeing me once every two weeks, if that, to crying that I didn't seem to care about them and wondering who was getting all my time. The streets got my time, love. That was always my answer. 